What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a brand new add-on from the guys over at Graswald that allows you to scatter objects really quickly inside a Blender called G Scatter. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So you can download this add-on on Graswald's site, which I will link to in the notes down below. There's a free add-on here. And so one thing to note about this is you do need to use Blender version 2.9 three or higher because it's using geometry nodes in order to scatter objects inside of your scenes. So we can may come back to this page a little bit later, but I wanted to talk you through kind of how it works. So when you download that, you install it just like any other add-on, just by going in here and using the install function right here. And it'll show up as Object G Scatter by Graswald. And so you wanna make sure that you check this box right here to enable it. That's gonna add a little tab over here on the right-hand side of the page. And so the whole idea behind this add-on is it's supposed to be a very simple way to scatter things, and uh, it's built on geometry nodes. So basically the way that it works is you select your surface right here. You select the object that you want to scatter, and you can click on the button for Scatter as Objects. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna scatter your object on your surface just like this. And then you're gonna get a number of different options down here for different things you can do with that. So things like adjusting the density of your objects. And so one thing I wanna make sure that I hit on early, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete out this object, is note that if you do add something, so for example, if I add a plane over here and I scale it up, and then I try to scatter something on this. So like, let's say I pick my Bonnie model again. And so notice how right now these objects are getting scattered over here. So before you place any of this, you wanna make sure that you go in and you apply all transforms like this. Because otherwise what it's doing is it's trying to scatter these, but it hasn't figured out that transformations have been applied to your surface. So if I was to now select this object and click on the button for scatter as objects, you can see how it's gonna get placed on this plane right here. So if you do run into that issue, just make sure that you have applied that rotation, scale, location, all of that um, before you do this and it should work fine. All right, so let's say that we wanted to use some objects that come built in to G scatter. So what we can do is we can select our surface like this. And then instead of selecting an object and clicking on the scatter button, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna click on the button for asset browser. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you access to some of the built-in assets that come with G scatter. Notice how there's different assets that do come built into this for free. So you get some free grass, um, some different plants, other things like that to get you started. There's also an option on the right hand side. You can download the Graswald asset pack. Note that that asset pack is a paid asset pack, but it does come with some really high quality assets. So if you do need more assets, that is one option. But let's say that we wanted to add something like this creeping bent grass to our scene. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on this um, and then notice how there's options over here to adjust if it's placed as single or clumps. We're gonna go with clumps as well as levels of detail. So you can do like proxy models in here if you want to, um, low or high, and then low or high material quality. And so once we're done with that, we can click the button for scatter selected. We're gonna click on okay. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna come in here and this is gonna scatter all of those pieces of grass on our surface in our scene. And so notice how when it does this, we have controls down below for tweaking how many of these objects are in here. So for example, I can adjust the density up or down just like this. So you can see how this little tab allows you to do that. And so notice how as at a certain point, these objects kind of start overlapping with each other, right? So if you zoom in, you can see how the geometry is kind of like running over itself in here. So there is an option right here to limit those intersections. And what you can do is you can set this so that it gives a certain amount of space around each instance in here. So if it is a big deal for you to not have these things intersect, you can click on the button for limit intersections. So you can also adjust the position seed right here, which is just gonna allow you to adjust your randomization. So in addition, let's say you had an area where you didn't want objects to go. Well, what you could do is you could use the option for vertex masking right here. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to vertex paint in here, which is gonna let you set where different objects show up inside of your scene. So notice how when I set this so that I can paint right here, I can paint this in and only areas that I've painted are going to have this plant located around them. So there's a lot of interesting things you could do with this function, um, but this gives you a lot more fine control over the way things are scattered 
inside of your scene. So you can also adjust the scale of the objects and the randomness of your objects as well, um, allowing you to set these so that they're not all the exact same uniform size. And then scale seed is gonna do the same thing. It's just gonna let you set the randomization over here. So you've also got options in here to adjust the axis that these are on. So you could add a little bit of up down randomization if you wanted to do that so that these aren't all facing in the exact same direction just by adjusting these sliders right here. So then let's say that we were to do a quick render over here and I'm just gonna do an EV render. And so I will note the quality of these assets is very high as well. Even if it doesn't have a giant library of different objects in here, just the objects that it has are really high quality objects and they're gonna render out really nicely. And so you can also scatter multiple objects in here. And so let's say we wanted to place another object on here. All you would have to do is just select the object, click on as object, and then place this. And same thing, we could bring down the density on these rocks like this, but then we could also check the limit intersections box, set that minimum distance so they're not um, overlapping each other. Then we could also, notice how we can adjust the location with this position seed, but we could also set the rotation to be a little more random as well. So just like this. So then what we're able to do is randomly place things like rocks inside of our scene as well. So I will link to some other videos about geometry nodes on this page so you can get an idea of how this works behind the scenes. So as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.